Hey guys, Snoopy here, and a couple of people have been asking me how they can make edits to some of the GamePro programs, so I just wanted to do a really quick tutorial basically to show you how you can do that. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you go to the GamePro uh, website, and click on software, um, and under Windows, GamePro programs, um, you scroll right to the bottom, there's this, um, basically all of the source code for any of the programs. So you can download, you know, any of these that you potentially want to edit. Um, also, most of the programs, so if I go to a new one, for example, Breeding for Sword and Shield, there will be a .cpp file, which is the source code file for that software, um, for that particular version. So you can also grab it from there, but it will be in that, um, that other source um, folder as well. So um, the first thing you want to do is download Visual Studio. Um, so 2019 is the most up-to-date version and you can download this community version for free so I'll, I'll I'll link this down in the description the other thing that you may need and this is for any software that uses the webcam which is all of the switch software and about half of the programs on the 3ds game pro um, you'll need to download OpenCV um, so you can do that from here again I'll chuck that website down in the description but you can download it um, from here um, so I'll just quickly jump into um, Visual Studios, which I've already opened up, and just to show you where that came from, I'll get rid of that um, file for now. So one of the things that you will need to do, and I'll just show you, this is this is if you want to use the webcam, um, which, as I said, most of the software will. Um, you need to link the OpenCV libraries to it. So if I just go to Properties, um, you should be able to see, yeah, I've got all of the, these um, OpenCV libraries linked. Now, there's a little bit of a process um, to get to that point. So I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, what I will do is, uh, there's this video here that I um, found when I was looking to first set this up, which was a, a really good guide. So what I'll do is I'll just chuck that down in the description. Um, and then you can follow that to get the um, OpenCV libraries linked to Visual Studio. Um, so once you've got that done and you've created a new project, um, what you can do is just add um, an existing piece of code. And again, I'm just um, you, you can download it from the website and chuck it into a, a directory that suits. Um, and then navigate to wherever that is. And um, what I'm going to do um just quickly show you so someone had asked me they've been trying this um ultra sun and moon um shiny starter software and they said there's a part of it where it's um it's going too quickly um it's pressing a too quickly for them um so what i'll do is just quickly open this up and i'll show you broadly how the uh, the code is set out at some point i, I plan to do a, a much more in-depth tutorial but this should at least just get some of you on the way so um, this is basically what the code looks like. Anything in green is a comment, and so there's potentially some useful information there, and some, sometimes it's just old code that I've left in there, um, but just commented it, um, it out so that it won't be part of the executable when I, when I run it. Um, but these are just um, some of the libraries that the code is using, and you'll notice there's an OpenCV one in there. So if you haven't linked it properly, uh, this will give you an error. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to see if I get rid of this, uh, then it should make um, some of these yeah, start to show up on the line because all of these things, um, it doesn't know where the appropriate library is for that. So it is really important that you have them linked correctly. But basically the, the programs are all set up with normally some global variables at the top and then you'll see um, a whole bunch of functions. Um, so this this first one, and I've generally denoted these just with these long bands of um, forward slashes. But so this one says function for pausing for a fixed period of time while showing frames. Um, so what that's doing is basically any time you want the program to pause for a period and just show what's happening on the webcam, um, this is a, a the function that um, you will call. And you don't need to worry about these functions. They're they're all there, you can just leave them as they are. Uh, you don't need to edit them for the software, but it's got this one in particular just to understand um, what it's doing. So 
again, as I said, there's, here's another function. This is just one for some of the color identification. Here's another one for locating where the target pixels are that you're going to use for determining shininess. But again, you don't need to worry about these too much. Just leave the functions as they are uh, and keep scrolling down until you see this int main. That's re where really the main program starts. Uh, and it'll always be set up with, um, it'll open up the webcam for starters and then it'll open up the COM port. So um, this is here, enter COM port number and then there's a little bit of coding to get that all set up. Uh, again, you don't need to worry about that side of things. Um, and then you can see this one, the very first thing it does, and again, look, just looking for these green text, because normally I've added kind of some useful comments here. Um, the program, basically the very first action it does is it soft resets, and um, that's what it's doing right here. So soft resets, and then it's basically, it's ready to start going into a loop. Um, so really, the, the, if you're going to edit the code um, to, to make it work in your situation or you want to adapt it for a different feature or something like that, probably you want to start where you see the first while loop begin. So what a while loop does is it just will loop continuously until a certain condition is met. And normally that's what you want to do if you're shiny hunting. Basically, you're going to keep doing the same task over and over and over until you find the shiny. Um, and then what you can see is once this we enter this while loop, um, you can see it starts giving commands to um, for the game pro to press certain buttons. So again, the green text will tell you um, what it's trying to do at that particular time. Um, and if I just go, you'll see it's all split into these blocks of code that are like five lines, basically. So the first bit is just a comment telling you what it's doing at that particular point in time. Um, so here, tell Arduino to press A, so that's Arduino's just the chip in the game pro. So tell Arduino to press A to continue game and walk into the grass. So to run this particular software you need something basically under the circle pad to um, move it straight into the grass um, to initiate that, um, that first encounter. So um, the second line, the only thing you need to worry about here is this letter. So that means it's going to press the A button. If you change that to B, it's going to press B. Um, and then there's there's a whole bunch of different um, variables you can you can use. So and these all match up with the ones that you send through on the serial monitor on your Game Pro. So if I wanted it say to press um, left, I would use S, um, or right would be F. If I wanted to let's say hold down, I'd put the number two there. Um, okay, but um, we'll just leave that as an A for now. Um, and then the next line is basically where it's sending that character down the serial port. Um, so that's where it sends that signal to the GamePro, and then when the GamePro receives it, it recognizes, okay, I need to press A, and it will activate the servo motor. This time limit, um, so it'll, it'll press A, and then what it's going to do is it's going to delay for a period of time based on what you input here. So this time limit here of 8,000, that's in milliseconds. So that means basically after, after it presses A, it's going to wait for 8 seconds. Um, and this is where, these are some of the things, some of the timings, if it's not quite working on your um, 3DS or your Switch because for whatever reason yours is running a bit slower or faster or, or whatever, um, you, can, you can edit these values. And then this this last line, time delay capture, that just calls that function that we looked at right at the very top um, that basically says it's going to keep showing frames on the webcam um, for a certain period of time. In this case, it's eight seconds. So while it's doing that delay, there's going to be nothing sent to the, the um, game pro to press any buttons. But what it's going to do for the next eight seconds is the webcam is just going to um, keep grabbing frames and displaying them. So that's basically, um, you know, what this block of code is doing. And you you can see, like, for the rest of the, the program, basically, it's just these little blocks of code um, just saying when to press a button and how long to wait for. And that's pretty much, um, you know, the, the sum of, um, of what's left. There's a couple of places where you can see here, this is what's called a for loop. Um, so in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, press A, four times 
Um, and the reason I've done this is it's just a little bit more efficient from a coding point of view. Um, if it's just cycling through some text and pressing A for the same duration, which in this case is 2.8 seconds uh, each time, it's just a little bit more efficient to uh, to do it in a for loop as opposed to copying out the, those same five load lines of code four times. Um, now, if we scroll a little bit further down, so this is, it's all just got talking through text. Unfortunately, there's a really long um, bit of text in, in this one just to make it hard to uh, try and soft reset for that shiny starter. Um, but what I wanted to show you was here. So this is where um, the code um, does something slightly different um, to basically choose which starter you want. So there, there was an option earlier in the code where it said, do you want to choose have the fire, water or grass starter? Um, and then this has got a couple of kind of if statements depending what you what you selected. Now, the feedback that I had from the person who was, uh, this code wasn't quite working for them. Um, they said um, it was going too fast. I was pressing the, the A button too fast uh, right before picking the starter. So this is where it's choosing the starter. Um, and this is where it's, it, it presses the A button immediately before that. Um, so if it's pressing this A too early, then what that says to me is maybe this pause here is not long enough. So you can see before it presses that A button to choose a starter, um, there's there's a pause of four and a half seconds. Um, and I, I presume that's the bit that they're referring to. Um, so it, it could either be there or it could be um, further down here where it's actually pressing A to choose the starter. Um, so I don't actually know in the case of this person, but as an example, and, and so that, that they could potentially edit this themselves, if it is um, right before it presses that A and then navigates to press, um, to the find the correct starter, all they need to do is say, okay, that four and a half seconds isn't long enough. Let's make that, say, 6,000. Right, and then while you're um, in Visual Studios, what you can do is just, Leave the program on debug and then just jump up here and hit run. And so that'll build the software and um, it's pulled it up on here, which I don't actually have it, uh, my Game Pro connected at the moment with this software. But you can, from here, you can just run the software as you normally will. Um, so you can enter your camera number and COM port number. Um, let it run through and see if the change that you made fixed the problem. Uh, and if it didn't, um, and you can stop running that. And so maybe that one was okay at 4,500 and maybe it was actually, it was this one uh, that needed to, to be adjusted. So, and you can just adjust the, the time frames of the appropriate A press um, once you've worked out exactly which one it is. Um, if it's, if you think like there's not, it's missing in A press completely, um, or that's another common one that I, I, I um, have had is that people have a game that's in a different language um, and there might be one extra sentence for example um, so you can just copy this block of code so let's say there's an extra A press here and paste it and there we go that's it and maybe uh, the extra A press needs a slightly longer delay afterwards so maybe that needs to be two and a half seconds we'll just make it 2500 and then you're away and then you can just run the software Leave it a debug, test that it's it's working, um, and then yeah, you're you're away. Um, so normally, what I do once I've got everything working, I put this into um, release, and then what that will do is it'll it'll generate the executable file when I run this, um, and then that's what I post in the in the Dropbox folders. Um, but as I said, while you're testing it, and um, I mean there, there's no need for you ever actually to. Um, even um, generate the executable if you don't want to. Um, you can just always run the software from here in debug mode. Um, and let's say you, you've done running this program. So what you can do is right click on it and go exclude from project. Um, I won't save those changes for now. And then you can just add an existing item. And let's say now I want to start on 
Sword and Shield automatic breeding because there's a change I need to make to that. Then I can just open it up from here, edit what I need to, um, and then I'm away. So yeah, as I said, the idea was that this would just be a fairly quick introductory uh, video to let those who are, who are really eager and keen to give this a go, to give a little bit of direction of how the code can be edited. Um, I know when I first started doing a lot of this, uh, I did have a bit of difficulty getting the, the uh, OpenCV libraries linked. Um, but as I said, that, that tutorial uh, that I'll leave a link to was really helpful. Um, so hopefully you'll also find that equally um, um, useful. But yeah, if you have any difficulty with this, I mean, I'm, I'm usually pretty good at responding to questions and that sort of thing. Um, so click me a message or an email and I'm not always quick at responding, but I, I always do try to get back to those. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Again, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to get in touch or post below and I'll try and, uh, try and respond. But until next time, see ya.